Here's an old cordless phone that I have from 1990 and the battery has spoiled again so we're going to go ahead and replace it today. Unfortunately the batteries for this telephone are very difficult to find after I don't know, 15, 20, 25 something years. Um, so I have to use these. The plug is not exactly the same uh, but I modified the plug to fit because reality be it, I'm not going to be able to find the original replacement, so I'm going to put one of these. Um, I'm not sure, I have two of these, I'm not sure which one actually works. Uh, I bought a couple of these back because um, it's cheaper when you buy more of them at once, and one of them was a dud. I don't know about the other ones, but we'll give it a try. Um, I actually don't have too many cordless phone batteries on tap right now. And that's for the VTEC i6763s. Um, this is for the 2080s by Uniden, and this is boring, we'll just replace the battery. Alright, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to collapse the antenna just for practicality purposes. And then you're going to want to turn the handset over like this. Let me lock the focus on the video here. So what we have to do is remove this uh, little plastic thing that goes over the numerical memory things it just kind of pulls up like this and then you have to get the memory paper out now we have to undo this screw here And we can now remove the battery cover. I'm discovering something I don't really like, and that is the fact that this battery appears to be made in 2012. Now, the reason I don't like that is because I just bought this a few months ago, so it should be like from 2014 at least. Um, the other reason I don't like this is because if this is two year old stock, that means they may not be making this battery anymore. Um, in which case, they may not be able to get replacement batteries when these run out. That having been said, I may eventually um, see if I can fit a modified battery pack of some sort in here because these are getting difficult to find, they don't last very long. Anyways, that's for a whole other video discussion. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug this here. Now, interestingly enough, this battery doesn't seem to have a date code on it, but uh, this one does. So anyways, that one's no good. Um, let's take a look at the plug here. The original plug, oh, let's get this in focus. The original plug, I don't know if we'll be able to see this or not, but on the original plug, the wire, the prongs there, uh, you can't really see it, but they went horizontally, so the, the um, unfortunately the new batteries, the plugs go vertically, so I had to modify the prongs a bit, nothing that's not undoable, it's a little bent there, um, but I figured I might as well do that because if you can't you know, plug the battery and the phone's kind of useless. So let's go ahead and plug this battery in. And again, this doesn't really fit completely properly, but it fits enough to make the telephone work. So I'm going to see, play with this a minute to get that stuff back in there, and then we'll try it out. I'm just looking at this a little bit closer now, and I think this is put in there improperly. I don't think this wire is supposed to come through there. I think it's supposed to go under and come out the side here. I'm going to see if I can get it to do that so the battery fits properly. In order to correct the battery wire thing, I had to actually take it apart. So I figured while I have it split open, I'll show you the board and all the other components. Very, very simple compared to the words of the phones you see in today's phones. That was a horrible way to word that. But, this looks like it's all in pretty good condition. 
and the capacitors are bulging or anything. And it overall looks pretty good. Uh, but I did notice that there was something wrong with the antenna. Something very wrong with the antenna. Uh, there was some hackery done on it at some point and it's pretty much held in with tape. Uh, you'll see here that this critical point down here, that metal piece, has broken. So now the antenna pretty much just moves freely. So um, eventually I'll probably get a new piece to screw on there and fix it properly. Um, but for now I'm just going to glue it together so we can actually, you know, have properly held on the antenna. On second though, I decided I didn't want to glue it, uh, partially because I don't like gluing things, and then partially because I couldn't get the glue to come out anyways. So what I did here is I just took the uh, piece that was left and jammed it in between the other piece there with the screw and tightened the screw, and it's actually pretty secure. So I'm going to put the antenna on, and that's going to be it for now. Okay, the antenna is back on, and it seems to be pretty sturdy, so now I'm going to close the cover back up again, and I'll replace the battery. Yeah, this is how it's supposed to be. I don't know why it wasn't like that before. Um, anyways, now that's how it's supposed to be. Uh, the antenna is also no longer loose, which is nice. Um, if I had more time, I'd play around this a little bit more, put the free antennas on there and see what kind of range you could get, because... Uh, at this frequency, with the right antennas, you could really get some good range. Um, but I haven't got time for that, at least not now anyways. So, I'm doing that. I want to underscore that screws stick to iPads, apparently. Because uh, I'm looking for this screw, I thought I dropped it on the ground. And then I'm looking all over the place. Moved everything. And I pick up the iPad, and there's a dumb screw on the stinking iPad. What the heck? Alright, now we can finally replace the battery. And it'll fit properly. I, you know, I modified this plug and I kind of wish I had just, uh, um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, I wish I had taken the, I still have the original battery. I may actually do this. I want to take the, the plug off of the original battery and, and refashion this so that it fits properly. Um, Anyways, I'll do that some other time. Now that the batteries are going to rest in here properly, like so, um, this will actually fit now. Alright, now that the battery is in there, um, take this and slide it up. And the screw goes in here. And then the, uh, what is this thing, the memory dial paper goes back on there. And then the plastic cover thing goes on as well. Yeah, kind of. There we go. Okay. Now we're ready to use it. Let's see. No signs of life. Let's give it a charge. Alright, let's throw this on charge here. Uh-oh. We have no charge. You know what? I don't think it's plugged in. Nope. That would be the source of the problem, right there. It's not plugged in. Okay, let's uh, try that again. We have charging. All right, I'll let this sit there for a few minutes and charge up, and hopefully the battery takes a charge. Oh, that was a dopey thing to do. I just realized I put the memory thing on wrong. Um, it's supposed to go on like this, with the memory dials showing. That's how it's supposed to be. 
Okay, it's been charging for a few minutes. Let's see if we have any signs of life here. In use. What do you know? It's working. Fantastic. Um, some of these buttons don't work as good as they should, but I'll have to take that apart and clean it one day. Oh, battery low. Good evening. Yeah, it's working. Come on. Alright. Well, that was successful. The antenna works pretty good now, too. You can uh, expand it and close it without any problems, like you're supposed to be able to. Okay, well that concludes this, well it turned out to be a very long video of this cordless phone. It's supposed to be a simple battery replacement turned into a pretty advanced repair. So, anyways, that's that. Uh, I'll be making more videos of this phone in the future because this is kind of a cool phone now that it's working again. So, uh, thank you for watching, over and out.